Good morning, mathematicians. Today we're on lesson 3.5, which is called multiplication and division. We are going to work to guide exploration of the relationship between multiplication and division, and to provide practice with division facts. So what this means is we're going to be working on basic multiplication facts that we already know, like 2 times 3 equals 6 and thinking about how this is also setting us up to do a division fact like 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Your goal should be written already for today. Let's get warmed up by naming the next three numbers in this pattern. So 10, 12, 14. Write the next three numbers. If you finish early, you should make up some of your own on your board. I'll say the first three numbers you fill in the next three. 10, 12, 14. Okay, 12, 16, 20. Thirty, twenty-five, twenty. Eighteen, fifteen, twelve. All right, let's try some more patterns like Find the next three numbers in each pattern. All right, I'll say the first three, you say the next three numbers. 18, 27, 36, 36. All right, so in this pattern, Going from number to number, it's plus 9. 24 to 30 is plus 6. So 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. The next one, we are minus 7. 49, 42, 35, 28, 21, 14. Then we are subtracting 8, 40, 32, 24. You can erase your boards and get those set aside. There's many different ways we can show multiplication. We've already talked about using multiplication grid, but here on the board we have a couple other ways that we might do this. So for example, you might fill in a chart to solve a number story. If it says a wedding party orders three dozen roses, there are 12 roses in a dozen. How many roses are there in all? So you might set up a chart with three, 12, and the total that we don't know for roses, and then you multiply three times 12 equals the answer. If we're also talking again about that wedding and we say for seating at a wedding, there are six rows of chairs with 10 rows or 10 chairs in each row. How many chairs are there in all? You can always set up a picture. We're going to take a look at some problems down below. Number one says, a box of granola bars contains 10 bars. How many bars total are there in seven boxes? Okay, so we know we have 10 bars in a box times seven boxes. What does that equal? Good, 70. How about this one? A marching band in a parade is in a rectangular array. There are four band members per row and seven rows. Hmm, so we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We have seven of these rows. That's two rows, three rows, four rows, five rows, six rows, seven rows. So the problem we are solving here is 7 times 4. What does that equal? Right, 28 for 28 band members. Let's take a look at how we go together. Below is a fact triangle. What are two multiplication facts that we can write from the same triangle? Right, we can do 8 times 3 equals 24, or 3 times 8 equals 24. Now we can also use these same exact facts 
and do division. Division is the opposite of multiplication. So let's just move these up here. And we always start with the largest number in division. So we do 24 divided by 3 equals 8. Or 24 divided by 8 equals 3. That means if we are thinking that we have 8 groups of 3, that would be 24 total, or 3 groups of 8. Now there's a special name for each of these numbers. It's either called a quotient, a divisor, we could also have a remainder, or we can have a dividend. The first number, the largest number, is called the dividend. That's where we start. We divide the dividend by another number. This other number is then called the divisor. It's the one we're dividing by. So we have dividend divided by divisor equals the answer in a division problem is called the quotient. So another way to think of the quotient is the answer. The remainder is what's left over. We don't have anything else left over, but sometimes in story problems, it doesn't divide evenly and there's a couple extra of something. So the remainder is what's left over. You're going to turn and talk to your partner to explain what a remainder is, what a dividend is, what a divisor is, and what a quotient is. Use each of those words. Turn and talk. This is the first page that you will be doing in your math journal. It's page 61, and just like we did earlier, they're going to be giving you a fact triangle. You're going to choose a fact triangle, actually, and come up with the two multiplication facts and the two corresponding division facts. So this is one triangle, this is your second triangle, and this is a third triangle. The next part of this page you may do with a partner, but this first part is independent. Remember, you can always use a multiplication table to help you with multiplication or division facts. So highlighted here, we know 6 times 7 equals 42. But if we are given the problem 42 divided by 6 equals what? We could find the 42 in our table. Make sure it's in the 6 column. So we know 42 divided by 6 equals the other number. There it is. There's that 7. Finally today, you will be doing math boxes. So your job today is to complete Math Journal page 61, fact with the multiplication and division. Remember, number one, you are doing on your own, and then you need to show a teacher before getting with a partner. Then you're going to practice your division facts with your fact triangles. We've gone over this before. Remember, you take out all of your fact triangles, you cover up one of the smaller numbers, and you quiz yourself. You then set them in a pile of numbers you know and numbers you don't know. Then you go through the don't know ones again. This means you're going through all of your triangles at least twice. Then you do math boxes 3.5 and finally beat the calculator. It's on reference book page 233 and you do need to use a score sheet, the Math Masters, page 461.